Hey, hello, how's everybody doing out there? I am Simon Lebon, and you're listening to Whoosh with Caddy Krasner. Hi, Simon. How are you? Um, I'm really happy. By the way, this is Whoosh 26 um, to brush some stranger's teeth. That would be weird when you, you know, when you sent me the playlist, sometimes I pay attention to the title and sometimes yeah. I don't. Yeah. And I thought <clears throat> that would be weird to brush. It would be teeth. weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, it really would be weird. Yes. I mean, you could brush your kids' teeth, but a stranger's teeth, that would be I sort know. of gross. I know. It is gross. Well, it's a line from one of the songs. Let's see if anybody can spot it. Okay, we um, won't tell them. <clears throat> so that, that first track, I, I might have been my track of the week. Oh, uh, I say. I love it. Uh, let me tell you about it, and then you okay. can tell me how you found it. Yeah, sure. It's uh, called What Kind of Music? <clears throat> the Jordan Rakai remix and it's by tom mish and yusef days i think i said all that correctly i think you said that right i think you got jordan reiki a bit wrong but doesn't matter oh. um i think it's important that the jordan reiki bit is quite crucial actually because i listened to the um i listened to the uh the original version and i didn't think it was as good for the radio show for this radio show as this one does i love it it's smooth it's very sophisticated yeah, I, I, they're interesting people. Tell us about them. Well, they grew up in the same southeast London area, oh, and yeah. uh, Tom saw Yusef play on drums in a talent show when they were nine years old, oh, wow. and he kind of remembered that guy. And then they, many years later, when Tom already had a label deal, they had a chance meeting at a party for uh, Tom's. LP that he had put out called Geography, and then they said, "Let's go, let's go in the studio and see what we can do." And so I, I kind of love that story. Yusef yeah. is one of the UK's most innovative young drummers. Yeah, and Tom, Fantastic. the drumming on that—I don't know if you noticed—but he actually changes the, the completely turns the beat around in the middle of the song, and it and it keeps the same tempo, but the actual beat changes from a kind of like a straight beat to much more of a swing beat, um, and 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 um, Tom sings over the top of it. It's really fantastic when he does that. I really thought this song was so cool. There was something yeah. like jazzy and swingy yeah. and poppy. Yeah. And I thought, so how'd you find them? Um, the usual way, you know, just trawling, trawling through Spotify. Um, it was, it was, I found this one on Spotify. Some, some of them I find on Bandcamp. I tend to find my new stuff on either Bandcamp or Spotify or people tell me about stuff and I go, and I go listening to that and I check things out. Funny enough, usually when somebody says you should listen to this, I listen to that and then I end up listening to something that's related to that and I'm picking the thing that's related to that. Right. That is definitely uh, your personality, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not. I'm not. I don't. I'm not contrary. I don't. I don't object to anybody no. suggesting suggesting things. And I, by the way, anybody who's listening, if you've got, if you, if you know some act who's, especially people who are not particularly well known, um, <clears throat> if you, if you'd like to put present them for for to be played, I'll have a listen to it, and if I feel it's right for the show, we'll play it. Hmm. Okay, I think I passed yeah. something along. You this did, week. you do. I, I think you passed every now something. and again. Yeah, I do pass yeah. some stuff along. Why not? So you would pass it along to Whoosh Radio, W H O O O S H Radio at gmail dot com, and why not? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Something we should hear. So our next. I didn't understand our next. I know. Wait. I did understand our next track, but isn't that the name of a perfume? I don't understand. Jupe Om. I mean, I think Jupe is a fashion brand, and I, I guess Jupe Om must be a perfume. But this is a this is, is as you will be able to tell from the music. This is somebody with a quirky sense of humor. Mm. Um, the artist is Kimbo Nice. Um, I think it's a band, but it yeah, might be a solo artist as it's well. It's a band, but you know it's how a they band. Hear it. How they got their name? No, go on, tell me. It's a reference to the late MMA fighter, Kimbo Slice. Oh, wow. 
I don't. And they're follow. saying, and they're saying like, we're Kimbo nice instead of because Kimbo, Kimbo slice probably slices you up, right? But well, this is Kimbo did. who's nice to people. Anyway, yeah. let's sh- should we should we, should we hit play? Let's hit play. Let's, let's hit play. This is Kimbo nice with Jupe Om. It's French, you know.
Malik Judy with à l'envers, um, à l'envers, which I am reliably informed is French, you know. For so- <laughs> French for going backwards. Sometimes English is so much easier. You're so somewhat reliably informed because I put it into Google Translate. So, you know, if we messed up, you just let me know. So I, I, lo- I look I looked at it and I looked at the cover of the of the of the of the track and it's got this this guy on a horse standing on a bit of earth in the sky and I thought it was going across the universe. But it well, ain't because it's in inver- I guess it means inverse. That's mm. a, it's a it's a frenchism too far for me. It's French, you know. Mm, So so (laughs) Malik is French, and he was born to Algerian and Vietnamese parents. And he made the switch back to his mother tongue. He originally Uh started recording in English in some underground groups called Moon Palais and Kim Tim. But now he sings primarily in French. Now, it's funny because I thought at the beginning of that track, he was actually singing in English. Mm. Oh, and so by the way, I. by the way, guys, everybody, everybody. Hey, Super Tramp, anybody? <laughs> that was inspired that that uh, you caught that. I yeah, did that. Definitely was... got I definitely think there's a that. It's very, very reminiscent of the Crime of the Century album, I would say. I would say. <clears> take <throat> a look at my girlfriend. Um I think that he is starting to play shows again. Oh, cool. I, uh, he's doing a show November Good for him. Tw- yeah, November 28th in France. He had to cancel a lot of stuff. That particular track you played came out in 2017, but he's very active. Right. And um, I very much enjoyed him. I felt, you know, a little bit of air, a little bit of super tramp, a little mm-hmm. bit of... I don't know everything French. That can I, I like. just can I just interject here? Now I, I know I said that I would never do this, but, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to plug <laughs> Duran Duran. Um, Duran Duran are playing in um, opening weekend in Ibiza. Ne- we're booked to play next year, 2021. That is COVID permitting, of course, and. Um, there are packages available. There are tickets available. I think Roger's going to DJ one night. Um, Duran Duran are scheduled to play in a dan, 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 secret location, um, which will be fabulous. I know Ibiza. I go there lots, and it's so much fun. It's so great. Um, so if you're interested... Can I just give it a big one bit, one slightly more big plug? It's interested. There is some kind of, there's a link on durandran.com. Go to durandran.com. You'll find all the information there. Um, It would, I mean, I'm looking forward to one massive great party in which we will, um, you know, celebrate at least a little escape from the COVID rules. I, uh, hopefully it'll be, hopefully it'll be over by then but i think that's very wishful thinking certainly hopefully it'll be over enough for us to be able to do it yeah it's april 30th to may 3rd it seems fantastic the it's accom- a three-day party it is the accommodations are all named after duran duran songs which i love um i probably will not be joining you oh i have responded- oh, re- oh, oh really oh but- is that what you think 
Well, I'll think about it. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how my kinder will do without me. Okay. They're a little too young to partake in Ibiza. Well, so, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe Brian has to do a little bit of daddy daycare, you know? He does a lot. <laughs> I bet he does. He does. <laughs> I, uh, actually. I bet he does. Hi, Brian. Hope you're well. <laughs> you're so sweet. I'm so, not suggesting that you don't come to. Maybe you come to Ibiza, Brian, and Caddy stays at home with the kids. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't bro, you know, I don't, I don't mind. Me. Brian wouldn't mind either. So let's take a question. If okay. you, uh, we Fabulous. got some good questions this week. If you Great. have a question for me, Caddy Krasner, or Simon, you send them to wishradio <laughs> at gmail.com. So this is from Diane. Hello, Diane. And hello. Oh, ah, this is from Dan. Even, I even read names. <laughs> Dan, Diane. Same thing. So Dan. D- Dan Walton. I'm sorry, Dan. Some of my favorite Duran Duran su- tunes are the mellow atmospheric ones, like mm-hmm. Too Late too late, Marlene, Land, oh. Palomino, oh. Winter March is on, My Antarctica, Do You Believe in Shame, etc. Who in the band is most responsible for that vibe in your songs? Me. I, me, I, Dan. It's I, all I, me, honestly. Um, that's not true. It's, I'd like to think it was just me. Um, well, you picked up some really good ones there. Uh, let's, let's see now. Let's go through some of them in detail. Um, well, Too Late Marlene really was based on the, um, on the rhythm unit and John's bass line. Do, 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 bum, 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 do, 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 bum, 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 which I think actually is um, a keyboard, isn't it? keyboard and bass so it was yeah it came from it came it came actually that was a when i think about it it was a, it was a divine marriage of of rhythm and melody um that is actually one of my favorite ever duran duran songs <clears throat> too late marlene mm. Who i was? love that because you think you can show you just a little bit by now, just, just a, little a little bit, bit by, by now. now, and tell you, you see, baby, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, what a song. Mm-hmm. Well, Slightly let down by the chorus, I'd say. The chorus is not as good as the verse. Or who the, is, the, no, the, chorus is, the chorus is not as good as the bridge. The bridge is better than the verse. Right. Anyway, let's move on before I start slagging our own songs off. Who is um, Marla- who's Marlene? Ah. Uh, Never going to find out. Let's move on. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's it, the song is is saying it's too late to break up, which we've gone too far. It's just stupid to break up now. That's what mm. the song's about. Oh. So who do you who do you think it's about? I'm gonna Have a guess. Yeah. Have a guess. It was written in 1989, so, you know. Mhm. I've been married to Yasmin for about how much moving time? on i think it's time to play some music or do you I, want to get, question? I got a good question this is okay. from Lori, who's i okay. believe asked us questions before i uh-huh. recognize her her name yeah. uh, her email simon and caddy will you please run for president and vice president you two can work, <laughs> you can work out who is who Simon, I'm sure we can manage the citizenship issue. Americans have shown they are willing to overlook a lot of disqualifying traits. But Simon and Ka- oh, Laban Krasner, 2020. What would be your campaign theme song? That's a good question. <laughs> um, what would be our campaign theme song, Simon? Um, uh, what do you think? I'm, I'm very tempted to say Wild Boys. That would be, well... And girls. And girls, yeah. I can give a really good... Um, Reach out for the sunrise, I think. Reach out for the sunrise. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because it's very positive. It's like, come on, reach up for the sunrise. We yeah, can okay. run on a positivity platform. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody... And we're, we're independents. We're not Democrats and we're not Republicans, nope, right? No, we're not. We're we, totally independents. I am not registered as either, not that anybody cares. I am not I registered am not. as either. And uh, we, if I become vice president, everybody will get a map and a compass. 
And mm. if I'm vice president, I'll send mm. one to their house. And as pr- that's my pledge mm. promise. Do you, uh, do, do you know what? It was so funny. We were sitting at the dinner table um, to, 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 uh, for Sunday lunch on, on the weekend. Mm. And um, we got the two, the two little um, grandchildren running around the table. And Taro picks up this little brass compass that was sitting on the side, like a little ornamental compass. It really it works and everything. And she said, and he goes, why this? Because we understand what he says. He said, "What's what's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, well, what's this for? What's this for?" And 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 Yasmin goes, "It tells you where you are." I said, "No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It tells you where North <laughs> is." That's a very delightful. Well, story. a compass doesn't tell you where, tell you, you, are. where you are. No, you need a compass. You, you, need, you, you can tell where you are with a compass and a map, as long as where you are is on that map. Right. Do you remember ages ago? I had this really ugly big yellow watch with a little compass on the side. You love that watch yes, for me. Do you I, remember I do. it? do. Yes. <laughs> Where is it? Why don't I, you wear it now? Why I, don't you wear it now? Every day I should wear it. <laughs> um, I loved your question, Diane. And we're, we're Simon and I uh, will take it under consideration in four years. Um, tell me about this next track. Cause I know a oh. smidgy bit about I mean, I, Kay I, Flay. I, I, I know nothing about Kay Flay apart from I mean, she's got to be English or British I would say British looks like looks British or well, I suppose it could be Irish 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 New York yes yeah, she's, she's from America do you know why know. why did Let I think that with, why did I think, I think her, her face and the way she holds herself I would have thought that too the yeah. way she holds herself do you know what I think it's because I saw I that you know what tell me I, I didn't look properly oh. I, was, I was judging by the coins on the front of her um record cover I'm trying she's from Illinois so Illinois. she's right in the middle She's okay. right in the middle of America. Her name is Christine Meredith Flaherty. She's better known as Kay Flay, an American yep. singer, songwriter, rapper, and musician. In 2016, she signed with Interscope, and she was nominated for a Best Rock Song Grammy for this very song. Oh, fantastic. Well, this is a really great song, and I suggest you all sit down and listen, because we're going to play Kay Flay and her track, Blood in the the boy I love's got another girl He might be fucking her right now I don't have an apartment Thought if I was smart I'd make it far But I'm still at the start Guess I'm contagious It'd be safest if you ran Fuck, that's what they all just end up doing in the end Take my car and paint it black Take my arm, break it in half Say something, do it soon It's too quiet in this room I need noise I need the buzz of a sub Need the crack of a whip Need some blood in the cup I need noise I need the buzz of a sub Need the crack of a whip Need some blood in the cup I need
And Pretty Pimpin, which was a big, big hit. I know you don't get many hits on this show, but I've had that song on my brain for such a long time. Um, I f- originally, I've had it in my the playlist from way, way, way back when, when I was playing sort of much more kind of oldies and hits and things. And um, it's, it's sitting in there in, in my Radio Possibles file. And last week, um, the, f- the wonderful... 
magnificent Karis Matthews. Um, can't remember the name of a band, but she had that song, You Give Me Road Ridge. Karis Matthews played it on her show on radio, BBC Radio 6. I heard it again, and, it, and I have not stopped singing it since. So I had to put it in our show to get it off my brain. And I really like that song. And if you're in... Oh, we're not going to give away what the, the, the little Easter egg in it. There is a little Easter egg. First of all, Easter egg in it. I love that his name is really Kurt Vile. I, could, of course, thought of Kurt... Vile. Kurt Vile, who's right, the, the German right, yeah. Yeah, playwright. But this is this gentleman's real name. He's an American singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and he also produces records. Yeah, he's, he's so talented. He's Incredibly very talented. Incredibly talented. Uh, this song, Pretty Pimping, peaked on the Billboard Adult Alternative Songs chart at number one, becoming his first chart topper. Oh, great. Well but, done. He deserves it. Thoroughly deserved, I would it, say. It did indeed. And on Whoosh 10, we had the song Keep On by Courtney Barnett. Ah, yes. And she collaborated with Kurt on a whole album in 2017. Oh, I didn't know that. So you, those, those are two of your people together oh, on, a, right, okay. on an album. So That's good to have, know. That's yeah, good to know. We might have to check that out. Yeah. So we have a question from Paula. Okay. Who says that Simon, a few episodes ago, mentioned Later with Jules Holland yes. that she watches and that in 2015, during the Paper Gods launch, Duran Duran mm. were on for what she believes might have been the first time. Yeah. And do you remember, she just wants to know what that experience was like because she really enjoys watching the show herself. Just okay, I'm going to be honest with you now. Paula, Paula, <clears throat> I love that show too. And we were so excited about doing that show. I was terrified. Um, I had almost completely lost my voice. Um, I don't know why. I hadn't been singing a lot. I just must have got some kind of a, of a, a cough or a virus or something. And it was so hard for me to sing. And I remember we did um, What Are the Chances? And What Are the Chances is a really, is, is, it's not the easiest of the songs on that album to sing. It needs a really good, pure vocal to hit those high notes in, in the chorus. And I, and Jules said to me before, he says, do you want me to make an announcement about your voice? And I was kind of, th no, 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 I'm just going to get through it. I don't want to draw attention to the fact I'm not very well. And I was, it was really hard for me. And I kind of, and I remember who else was on that show with us? Um, John Lydon or Lydon, old Johnny Rotten. John Lydon, he was on. He's a lovely guy. And Wolf Alice was on. And I remember seeing, seeing the girl from Wolf Alice kind of looking at me. And I kind of thought she was thinking, I don't, I don't get what the big deal is with Duran Duran. <laughs> anyway, that was just me projecting. It was, it was a really tough experience for me. Really, really tough. But do you think you ended up sounding okay? Apparently, apparently I, I, you know, I can't watch myself back or listen to myself back. It makes me feel very self-conscious the next mm. time I go on the camera. So I just don't do it. Um, and apparently, but when you said it sounded fine, it said when it, on TV, apparently it was fine. So I can't complain. I'm not complaining. Not it was, complaining. Apparently it was okay. Not complain, not explain. Let's uh, have a question from someone named Simon, oh, who's yes. asking Simon a question. Note, I haven't had one question today. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted to ask Simon about one of my favorite Duran Duran songs, <clears throat> I Don't Want Your Love. How did Simon get the idea for doing the multi-layered vocal, and how did the Shep Pettibone single remix come about? Loving the show. Keep up the great work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, the multi-layered vocal, I think because it had that, we had that, I don't mind if you're keeping someone else behind. It just lent itself to very tight, um, close uh, three-part harmony. Um, and, and as soon as I started doing it, everybody in the band went, yeah, that's the way to go. So we, we just, we just made it work. You know, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not. A classically trained musician and I don't really read music for more than one voice uh, so it took a quite a long time for me to figure out what the harmonies were going to be but I did it but I did the whole thing by ear um, with a bit of help from 
the producers i.e do you um can you read music now or not no, really not really i mean i can for one voice like i said i mute music like a choir boy i can sing my line i can look mm. at the i can look at the paper and i can actually sing my line but um it's difficult otherwise um the other part of the question was how did the shep pettibone remix come about well you know that was just that's just normal you know when and certainly in those days you finished the song you'd, you'd send it out to people see if they're interested in doing a remix and shep came back and he was like one of the, pr- the pr- premium um top top league mixers of his day um and he came back and i love that remix i think it's fantastic mm, so really good. good yeah Speaking of so good, what did you think of our live show last week? Um, I enjoyed being live. Mm. Um, I I just don't like the process that people have to go through to to, to do it, and it embarrassed me a little bit. I I didn't like the fact we had to wait at the end of songs and things. So I've made a decision, and that is we are not going to do another live show until people can just press one button and listen to the whole thing from start to finish. Right. Okay. I think what that's, that's and I, and I, I, nobody's going to talk me out of that. Well, I would not try. Good. But I do think we might be able to, I've done more research, and I think we, what we might be able to get away with is playing videos, actual mm-hmm. videos, and then um, if Facebook no. takes it down afterwards, that's up to them. Okay. That's what right. I think we can do. Maybe around how. Well, you know, we're time. professionals, so we're we're not we in the we're not, we're not in we're not in the business of ripping other artists off and doing no. them out of their and doing them out of the the right kind of uh, remuneration for their songs. I cannot agree to that. Nope. Um, so I think we just we just, I've, I want to hold out and get this to get this as a proper internet radio channel. Okay. We'll still have the Spotify link up and all that stuff. But um, I really would like it to be it to work that way. Did you see our new website? Um, no. Radi- Radio dot Duran Duran dot com. Okay, I've got to, I've got to, I'll have a look at it. But you know me. I I'm, did send it to you. <clears throat> All right, okay. It looks Sorry. lovely. It's so great. Oh, great! I can't wait. I'll have I'll look at it right now. Ooh. What do you tell me about the next artist, Sinead O'Brien? Oh God, this is this is okay. This is for me the genius track of the um, of the show. <clears throat> I think I think track number six is kind of prime position for me. Mm, it is. Um, I noticed that. Yeah, well, it, it kind of. I you know I like to kind of keep a balanced show. Um, now, I you know I think I came across this. I was looking at a playlist of new indie artists um and and it, or alternative i think or alternative or indie and I, and this came on i thought wow i've got to have this this is this is fantastic stuff um i love her intonation this this is by the way another spoken word artist we're talking about which she kind of sings a bit but talks as well she has a tune she has a real intonation in her um in her speaking voice um and I love the way she delivers her lyrics. And the lyrics themselves are fantastic. She is a proper poet. And I mean, and I mean this really does remind me of Patti Smith, um, <clears throat> the, 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 the best work of Patti, Patti Smith, really. Or, you know, she's, up, she's up there. She's getting up there. But do you know that she is a proper poet, or were you well, just I kind that? of I kind of assumed that she was because of mm-hmm. the way she delivers and the words she uses as well, the repetition of certain phrases and the way she uses things. Um, so yeah, this is this is my artist of the week, and she's going to get the extra bonus track at the end of the show. <clears throat> so I'd like you all to pin back your ears with pins, not sellotape. Because it's much, it's much more meaningful when it hurts a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not serious. They don't anybody, say that don't, to don't, all it, the girls. don't, don't anybody actually do that. I was kidding. Yeah. So this is Sinead O'Brien on Wush with Taking on Time.
Moving off into the distance to get closer again Moving down the line to start only once again Take me to the walled city To define the limits more clearly Take me to the walled city This is what I am Possessed by ideas I am no more a thinker than a prisoner of dreams Fantastic! I'm I'm in love with that track. I think it's amazing. Um, uh, oh, God, by the way, what a guitarist! Extraordinary. Um, who's the guitarist? Shout out to Julian Hansen. Julian Hansen and the, and and the and the rhythm, the, the drums are top. That must be Oscar Robertson. Oh yeah, that that's a hell of a good outfit. They, I love that song. Yeah, me too. I thought at first she sounded like Orla. She does sound a bit like Orla. She's definitely got that kind of that Dublin sort of sound to her voice uh, in accent, I think. I mean, I'm not sure where she's from. I know she's Irish. Uh, Let me tell you, she is. uh, I don't know where she's from either, but her work had been highly regarded in literary journals. Yeah. And uh, people said you should put that stuff to uh, to music. It's just the best thing. <clears throat> and I mean, she the, did. She did, but the, the what's so great about it is the music is so great. Yeah. And you see, do you see what I'm saying about she has this intonation that uh, that that is almost like singing, but not quite. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm getting a vibe. I'm getting a little bit of a Laurie Anderson vibe from it as well. I have to say. I feel um, that too. So I so that's that's just that that's an artist worth keeping your eye on because i think i'd hope i pray and hope that she goes far because i want to hear more new stuff from her they're very interesting and they have a music video for this song that i really liked it was very stark it's in black and white and i uh i just liked it there was nothing hysterical about it other than i liked it um so i'm telling i'm telling you guys to go watch it I have a few more questions in our pipeline. Our friend Stephen has asked a question for us both. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That's lovely. Oh, that's nice. A question for Caddy. Yeah, well, sort of. I'm not. You get extra points for that. Yes, Stephen. Thank you, my dear. If you wanted a beautiful poem set to music, which one would you pick, and who would you choose to do the music? Are you going to bring up Patty Smith again? Time. Me? I yeah. thought you were gonna I thought you were gonna answer first. 
Do I look like the kind of person that knows a lot See, about do I, Does she look like the kind of person who wants a question aimed at her? No. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you ask me what my favorite episode of the Brady Bunch was, I okay, can give so you an what answer. Was this, this was, this was what, what poem would I choose? Yeah, and um, what and, and 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 was it who would do the music? Mm-hmm. Maybe you could do the music. Yeah, maybe I can do the music. Um, um, so I think my 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 favorite poem at the moment is a poem called "The Thread," and it's by Don Patterson. He's a Scottish writer. It's a wonderful poem. I'm very I'm tempted to recite it because I know it off by heart. On the radio, but you know, I think I'm going to save it for another day. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Because it, it makes me cry. You see. Oh well, then I don't want that to happen for you. And could you accompany the poem? Like, uh, if yeah, I would, guitar? I would organize the, I would organize the whole the music to go with it. Yeah. It's not got a lot of. It's it's. Um, Maybe it works better as a poem. I don't know. It's very tough. This, you know, you could you could choose something. With a with a with a sort of strong rhythm to it, those things always work well. You know, <clears throat> in Xanadu did Kublai Khan <laughs> a stately pleasure drome erect, where Alf the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. Now I hear come to the pleasure the pleasure dome. dome. Yeah, but oh, I mean, right. but but the Rudyard Kipling kind of got there before, I think. Right. Right. <laughs> I th- I think so too. Yeah. I don't really know I that I know an awful lot of poetry, so I might have to. Is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? No, that's a no, song. It's a, it's a nursery rhyme. It's, it's a nursery rhyme. <laughs> poems, poems. I'm sorry, Stephen. I don't. I bid you adieu because I am not. Uh, I don't know an awful lot about poetry. Right. Uh, we have a question from Nancy. Yes, I admit there were a few episodes I did not have enough time to listen to both the music and the chatting, so I would just choose the chatting. I think we asked a question, and she's answering. We did ask that. But now I have a question, and you can both answer. Which do you prefer, sunrise or sunset? Nancy. Ah, um, well, sunrise is a wonderful thing, but it means you've got to get up for it. Mm. Um, it is quite an extraordinary thing. Um, I think I love sunset because I, for some reason, I, 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 I it gives me much more the sense of the of the earth turning into the sun or away from the sun. Um, than I get when I'm looking when I'm up there for the sunrise, which I'm not often up for. Um, and I have to tell you, but I have seen the green flash and I have seen the green flash and I've seen it twice. What's the green Once, flash? Ah, it's this extraordinary kind of, um, it's a refraction of the light <clears throat> and it manifests itself either just as the sun goes down or just before the sun comes up. And what it is, it's only, you only get it when there's incredibly uh, clear air in between you and the horizon. So there's 18 miles. There's got to be no moisture in the air. So no clouds, no haze. That stops it from working. Anyway, what happens is the light of the sun, it bounces off the sea. And then it bounces, which you can't see because it's behind, it's, it bounces off the sea underneath the horizon. And it, then it is reflected up and it hits the ionosphere. And it, and it glows like a green colour, like a kind of or, or a wonderful kind of neon kind of green colour, almost like the same colour as English traffic lights. Um, and, it, and, it, and it appears like a, it appears to kind of to expand from a point horizontally, like a, like a line, like a, li- a line of green, a thin line that expands away from the point and then goes back to that point. <clears throat> and um, it's called the Green Flash. You should Google it and look it up. It's all. It's very well documented. Um, it's it's magical to see it, and not 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 a lot of people have seen it. It seems, um, but I'm very lucky. The first time I saw it, I was um, I was actually uh, on I was on drum when it was the day that we went round Cape Horn. Believe it or not, mm. um, and I looked. We sailed through the storm, and then we sailed in this incredibly clear 
um, morning. And before the sun came up, I saw the green flash, along with about four or five other guys who were in the cockpit of the boat at the time. And the second time I saw it, I was I was sailing in the Caribbean and we'd we'd sat down at a bar um on Palm Island which is which is a tiny little island right next to uh, uh Union Island and um we were sitting there in the bar overlooking the the horizon the sea drinking would you believe it tequila sunrises <laughs> I would <laughs> cliche or not <laughs> um and the sun went down and all of us were sitting there, the whole, there were like about six or seven of us were sitting there looking at the horizon where the sun went. And suddenly the sky lit up with this green flash, like I said, from a point in the center right above where the sun went down, out and then back in again. And it was, and everyone went, whoa, did you see that? <laughs> I think one person went, no, I was, I was looking at the sand. That would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> So it la- it's very quick the green flash. I don't think it I've is. Ever it heard really it. is. It, it's like takes it takes probably about it's less than three seconds. Probably less than two seconds. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like one second long. That's why hardly anybody sees it because you've just got to be looking at the sky at exactly the right time. There's a place I think um, on I I believe um, there's a there's a place. It's either I think it's on the west coast of France. Or the um, or the north west coast of uh, Spain, or or maybe it's in Portugal. But there's somewhere on the on the Atlantic coast of Europe that people go to specifically to see the green flash because apparently that's the best place to see it from. Because oh I guess it's be- because the air's the air's really really clear there. That's that's what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna Google it. You should um- do. I I was um, I prefer sunrise. Yeah, I th- I think because it's the beginning of a day, and I like you no, know, I just uh, I like that feeling of, of the whole day ahead of you, of the whole day ahead of me, and also like you know, thank gosh, I'm here for another day. Yeah, but you see, I have a different thing. So on Friday evening, when the sun goes down, you've got the whole weekend ahead of you. Well, that's true. You know? And I also like the, I like, I think the sunset, the sunset is such a beautiful, it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful end to the day. It's such a lovely bookend to the day. And you just get a chance to reflect on everything you've done during the day as well. I think that's very nice. That's true too. When I was in Hawaii with my family, I went to um, the volcano mm-hmm. Halikala, right. and it goes up 10,000 feet right. in the air. Mm-hmm. And I drove up. I wasn't nervous driving up, although there were very few guardrails. I was nervous. No, I was more nervous going up than going down, actually. Right. And anyway, we saw, I mean, we you... You saw the sunrise. It was you were right in the clouds. Your head mm-hmm. were in the clouds, and it was mm-hmm. one of the most beautiful things. And then everybody, as soon as the sun goes down, everybody races back into their car. <laughs> yeah, like, of course. Crazy. Yeah, of yeah, course. Of course they do. Yeah. They want to go. They want to go, yeah. go go down the pub, in it. Yeah, I was just like boom, done. And I was like, where's everybody at? So anyway, that was a fun question. So thank you for answering it. Yeah. And our neck I want to talk about our next track, which is called okay. Mixer. Yeah. By an artist called Amber Mark, who I had not ever heard of, but mm-hmm. fell in love with yeah, she's... when I listened mm-hmm. to this song. I've got to tell you, time. if you just fellas, check out Amber Mark and girls, check out Amber Mark. She's very fall in loveable with. She is. That is a hundred percent true. She there's something about this song reminded me of the brand new heavies. Right. Um, there was something super cool about it. She released and this is from her EP called What If, which was released in 2019 and she co-wrote this particular song mixer with andrew wyatt who himself is quite Uh, prolific and has worked with lady gaga and bruna mars and lord so um i was really excited for this song so let's let's have it would you like would you like to announce it i would do i would love to announce mixer by amber mark listening to it on whoosh Stay away, stay away 
Hercules and Love Affair. And, and guess who guess who the vocalist is? I have no idea who is the vocalist. The vocalist is, get this, Anoni, who used to be Anthony from Anthony and the Johnsons. I can In these it. in these gender fluid times, things like that should not shock us. No. 
Um, I absolutely, I love the vocal on that. It just, it reminds me of, um, reminds me very much of Bronski Beat, Jimmy mm. Somerville, mm-hmm. who's one of my favourite vocalists ever. Oh, me too. Um, and it's got a, it's got a real, uh, to, for me, it's got a real 80s feel to it. There's a simplicity to the, to the music that is, it's very direct. It's, um, it's just really great music. I'm so happy to play that on the radio. How did you find it? Just, you know, um, the word, I think the I, I think I was actually, no, no, I think I was really attracted by the cover. If you, if you've got, if you've got Spotify and you're looking at it, just check out the cover. It's just, it's a really interesting graphic. And I, and, and, and I just had to, I thought, wow, what's that? So I went right down the page and I, and I you know, I hit it, I hit, you know, played it. And I thought that the music is, is better than the, the graphic. Mm, that's it's interesting a, yeah you know what they say always judge a book by its cover and always <laughs> mi- and always mix your drinks <laughs> or maybe just judge an album cover by its cover so no but i think i think i you know i do think that artwork has is is a very important part of, of being attracted to something like a book or a piece of music as well can be too because it, if they if they invest the the time and I guess the money as well in giving it a decent cover, then the publishers or the record company must must have decided that it's a good piece of music already or a good book. Yeah, so maybe that's I that's, know. that's my philosophy. So I, I usually I, I I do think that 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 pictures and and artworks are very important. I mean, most modern. I've got to be honest with you. Most modern music now has fantastic graphics and artworks with it. You know, if you if you if you go down and you look at all the stuff that's on um, Wush right from the beginning, you'll see great great artworks on on the songs. And that's just a, that's just a sign of the times. That's just the way things are. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I know artwork obviously has always been important to Duran Duran. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And it shows. And I think it says a lot about the presentation of both the song and the artist. So that's my opinion. I agree. Oh, well, very good. I do, yes. So um, I have a little bit of bad news. Oh, no. What's happened? What's next? We're, we're wrap. We have to wrap. We have to wrap. Oh, I know. Not- I'm enjoying myself so much. It is, this is one of my favorite shows we've done. I love the tracks, and I love the, and I think we've had some very interesting conversations as well. We have, and <clears> we've <throat> learned a lot about each other, including uh, that I would be your vice president. So I like, yes. I like that. We yeah. have uh, two more tracks yeah. to, to wish okay. you out <clears> with. <throat> I, will, I, will, I, will, I will announce them and say goodbye. So... Um, do you have any messages for anybody? Yeah, listen to Whoosh next week. There isn't a lot, there's not much better around. Or if there is, I don't know about it. To any Whoosh <laughs> listener yes. that's having a birthday, we wish you a happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday to happy you. Happy birthday to you. And if it isn't your birthday, happy unbirthday. Mm, happy unbirthday. Bye. So uh, we have two more songs. One of them is by a band called Talk Boy, who was, to me again, a very Simon band they're leads yeah. they're a six piece leads band and this song is brand new it came out in 2020 all of them met at leeds college of music and um i really liked i actually read about them and they this song called stupid luck yeah one of the guy uh, the guys or gals in the band said i think it's good to remember although being driven is important for sure being able to realize how lucky you are is important too yeah Absolutely. The bonus track this week is by Sinead O'Brien. The track's title is Fall With Me. It's another great track from her. Um, And we'll leave you and see you next week. Here is Talk Boy with Stupid Luck. And we're just going to go whoosh.
This is an ode to the most basic city. This is the eulogy to the state I adore. Fall with me. Fall with me. Fall with me. Fall with me. You can't imagine the state that we're in. You can't imagine any reason for the state that we're in. This modern condition, it comes closing in You can't imagine the state that we're in The cheapest religion is this modern condition Too many minds on the beat They told me to be specific This is an ode to the most basic condition Fall with me Fall with me Further lullaby in reverse, let the lullaby revert, subvert your feeling. A shock comes as a cleaning. Fall with me. Day one after the snow, the spring made a giant leap to faith, and the city breathes again. Basic city, it's just one place to be on the head carousel. That we're in sky scrape against you can't imagine any reason ranging carousel of seasons imagine it's the direct result of our actions something like tragedy is this what it feels like to speak too freely is this what it feels like to be too specific if this is sleeplessly dreaming tell me of the wheel and what she said perpetually in motion involuntarily floating I don't want to wait anymore less is less more is much more than too many minds on the beat they told me to be specific this is an ode to the most basic condition Is an ode to the most basic 